subsequent generations, the emotion, the heroism, and the tragedy of a harrowing attack and the titanic struggle that would later unfold. As a young boy, says Leon Panetta, I remember seeing troops move through Fort Orr during the war years at Monterey, California. My parents would invite soldiers into our home for Christmas dinner. And I remember seeing young men from all over the country about to go to war. And I remember thinking in that uncertain time, this is going to be the last opportunity these young men have to enjoy the comforts of home for a long time. You are the veterans of that greatest generation. You have lived full lives and witnessed years of great prosperity because of the freedom you helped to secure for America and her allies. I know you take great pride, as I do, that your legacy lives on in today's men and women in uniform who have borne the burden of a decade of war and who are truly this nation's next greatest generation. The 9-11 generation, like you, has stepped forward in your image of service and sacrifice, volunteering for military duty after another sudden and terrible attack on our shores. We treasure you. You have brought everlasting credit to your fallen comrades. The men and women in today's military stand on the shoulders of your individual and combined sacrifice and service to our nation. Your example inspires those in uniform today, strengthens our nation's moral fiber, and proves that with united resolve, our country can surmount any challenge. Thank you for your service, for your sacrifice, and for your endless zeal to see to it that our children and our grandchildren can pass along a better life to the next generation. This has always been the American dream, a dream we can realize because of the determination of our citizens to defend it. God bless you. God bless our troops. And God bless the United States of America. Again, that was from Leon Panetta. I'll now read a shorter message from United States Senator Daniel K. Inouye. My fellow Americans, it is an honor to welcome you to the 70th anniversary of the Pearl Harbor Day commemoration. I deeply regret that due to my congressional duties in Washington, D.C., I am unable to join you today. Please know that my thoughts and prayers are with you. Pearl Harbor is one of the most historic and important symbols of our nation. We remember the day of infamy with dogged determination and an unwillingness to give up. America pulled itself out from the ashes to lead our great nation and allies successfully. Today, we gather to remember that day and to honor the American men and women who stood in harm's way and gave their lives in defense of freedom. As a veteran of that war, Senator Inouye says, I remember clearly the long lines of citizens volunteering to give blood to buy war bonds. I remember the school children who scoured the countryside looking for scrap metal for bullets and bombs. I remember the gallant ladies, wives, and sweethearts who rolled up their sleeves and took the places of their loved ones at the assembly lines. They were the unsung heroes of World War II. Your tribute honors all who sacrificed on December 7, 1941, and in World War II. It also ensures that future generations will never forget what happened at Pearl Harbor and the resolve, resiliency, and triumphant spirit of America. God bless all of you, and God bless America. From Daniel K. Inouye, U.S. Senator. And now, please welcome our Acting Governor of the State of Hawaii, Lieutenant Governor Brian Schatz. Good morning and aloha. Aloha to Pearl, Sur Pearl Harbor survivors, your friends and family, members of the United States Armed Forces, members of the National Park Service, and all of the guests of this extraordinary commemoration. Across the country, this day is being remembered. 
A nation pauses to honor those who have sacrificed so much for the peace, security, and betterment of those who followed. And at the same time, we look forward steadfastly and rededicate ourselves to the mission of peace in the world. We are uniquely privileged to observe this day and all it stands for here at Pearl Harbor. Our gratitude extends to everyone who has made this campus one of the most extraordinary places in the world. We have our beautiful year-old visitor center that welcomes everyone to understand what happened here and what it means today in the most poignant terms. And of course, the Arizona Memorial, where 1,177 servicemen lost their lives 70 years ago. Every year, one and a half million people visit here from all over the world. And then, fittingly, the USS Missouri, Mighty Mo, which received a total of 11 battle stars for service in World War II, Korea, and the Persian Gulf, and is probably best known as the site of the surrender of Japan, which ended World War II. Our surroundings are laden with history and with legacy. Every time we return here, we are overwhelmed by the power of this universal message of peace in this special place. It is like no other in the world. Today, we mark 70 years since the attack that occurred here. Some would say that 70 years is a long time, and in many respects, it is. But I know that all of us believe that when it comes to carrying on the legacy of remembrance, that this is just the beginning. As I look around and share this moment with all of you, I know we are resolute in carrying on this legacy of never forgetting and of honoring those who have sacrificed so much to ensure peace and freedom for the generations which followed, and for solemnly taking time today and offering prayer for them and of those American servicemen and women who are making great sacrifices across the globe at this very moment to ensure peace for all of us. Through your steadfast dedication, the work of the National Park Service, and so many others, the message of Pearl Harbor will never be erased. Your work will be honored in good faith by carrying it on forever. So again, my deepest thanks on behalf of Governor Neil Abercrombie and all of the people of Hawaii, especially to the survivors who are here today. And I ask that you again join me in applause for their contribution and their service to our great country. All of you are our family, our ohana, for what you have given and for what you rem remind us to give. Let us learn the lessons, teach them forever, and pray for peace. Let us never forget the price that has been paid for the freedoms that we enjoy. Let us humbly remember. Aloha. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. I have to say that from this vantage point, I can see the faces of the Pearl Harbor survivors, and I see you looking out at the water, and I can only imagine what's in your head and your heart. And it's just really, I'm so privileged to be able to see you and share this moment, and all of us are privileged to share this moment with you. The Honorable Kenneth Salazar, Secretary of the Interior, is unable to join us today. Superintendent Paul Dupre will read a message on behalf of Secretary Salazar. Secretary Salazar regrets not being able to be here today. In his comments, he identifies the need for us all to remember that the Pearl Harbor Survivors Association, begun in the late 1950s, was the genesis of the, the effort to remember Pearl Harbor and to commemorate the day on an annual basis and to provide an opportunity for the American public to visit the USS Arizona on a regular basis and thanks the Navy for its continued participation and contributions to s help support that effort. Seventy years ago today, the world changed. After that change, after the war, the Pacific War, a number of issues, a number of, excuse me, 
The Secretary is very proud to have the National Park Service help support this program and make sure that the, National, the, the United States Navy and the Pearl Harbor survivors and all of you are here today. Thank you very much. Mahalo, Superintendent Dupre. And now, a former Blue Angel who has led various squadron, wing, and group commands. He commanded U.S. Naval Forces in the Central Command and U.S. Fifth Fleet, leading combined maritime forces in operations enduring freedom and Iraqi freedom. Today he serves where Admiral Nimitz and Admiral Spruance once stood, leading the world's largest and greatest fleet, the United States Pacific Fleet, responsible for one million square miles, half of the world's surface. His 125,000 sailors and civilians work as a team to prevent war, promote security, and when necessary, confront and defeat aggression. The commander of the United States Pacific Fleet, Admiral Patrick Walsh. Well, thank you for that introduction. Good morning and aloha. aloha. Congressman Young, Secretary Mavis, Admiral Willard, Lieutenant Governor Schatz, mayors, community leaders, distinguished guests, Pearl Harbor survivors, and World War II veterans. I have one other introduction that I want to make this morning. We're lucky to have a special friend that we can recognize someone in the audience today who's been a tireless friend of veterans and members of the Uniformed Armed Forces. She is the proud sponsor of USS Pearl Harbor. Ladies and gentlemen, Beverly Young is here and I'd like to recognize her as well. I am humbled, I am honored, and I am especially grateful to be part of the commemoration today. Each year, the National Park Service, in concert with many partners, assembles a program that captures the essence of this commemorative event. In the past, we've gathered together under a variety of banners that honor the history that lies before us. Those include A Nation Remembers, Honoring the Past, Building for the Future, Pacific War Memories, the historic response to Pearl Harbor. Last year, it was a promise fulfilled, and this year, the enduring legacy. Each year gives us the opportunity to stand proudly, shoulder to shoulder, with men and women who have an extraordinary place in history. And each year, we are better people for it. Each program has given us another view into their remarkable lives, a window into the enormity of their task, an appreciation for the heaviness of their burden, the strength of their resolve, and the powerful commitment they undertook for their fellow man. And with each program, we are better sailors for it. Each commemoration has given us an opportunity to stand and to recognize noble sacrifice, courage under fire, and say, Thank you one more time for the risk that you took, the future that you built, the inheritance that you bequeathed to us so that we could have lives of promise, potential, and opportunity. And with each commemoration, we are a better nation for it. Look at our memorial today. Today, the flag is at half mast so that we pause, that we reflect we recognize and we memorialize the men and women who gave their lives in service to our country on that fateful day. All that it asks from us is simply to appreciate their sacrifice and to remember their loved ones. Today is important for honor, for opportunity, and for reasons that connect and cross generations because those who serve in uniform are part of a great circle of community history and tradition, where one generation cares for, mentors, and nurtures the next. At this hallowed setting, 
and extraordinary legacy endures.